You'll be murdered if you go in there. I could hear the resounding voices pounding in my ear as I turned the car, rubbing my, my swollen tummy and moved into the there, the dangerous area, the poverty area where many gangs lurked. And this, I realized, was against anything that my culture and my group were saying that I should do. I turned into the suburb and passed many poorer homes. As I started to ascend the hill, I passed the school and the, the, the little chapel and a number of shops. As I reached the top of the hill, I had to circle around and I had a view of my city and the harbour and the sea that I had never seen before. But why was I surprised? Nobody of my colour normally went in there. We weren't supposed to. Again, my baby kicked within my womb and I thought, oh gosh, it so reminds me of all the new births and the uprising and the swelling that we felt in our own nation. It was only two years ago when young people were shot down by the apartheid police in Soweto, an uprising of giant proportion and maybe a signal that things were certainly changing in our country. As I entered into the, the higher areas, I noticed how much bigger the homes were. And I, I got quite excited when I realized that we've been called um, into the ministry in the colored area. And my whiteness was so blatant to me as I entered into this space. Gingerly, I parked the car and got out and knocked on the big door of the big house that I wasn't expecting to be so big. The door opened and beautiful Auntie Aggie stood there, a lady who had started a small fellowship in her home and had called upon our church to bring ministers in. She welcomed me with such warmth. It was like a blanket that wrapped around me. I couldn't help but feel so welcome. Behind her, I noticed all the people sitting on the couches and the chairs that had assembled there to meet us on that evening had stood up and were coming towards us. And I felt absolutely overwhelmed with the warmth and the love. I felt so, so accepted and so welcome. And the lesson that I learnt was that there are times in our own lives and within our hearts that we have a calling, a desire, an aspiration to move on to the next thing. But the resounding voices come and say, no, don't go there. They, they trigger or they try to fire or light up the fears of the whole society around us to keep us in that conformity. But I'm so grateful when the still small voice pours peace into our beings and when the calling comes and you answer that call with the peace, that joy comes and there's this acceptance and this overwhelming warmth that I would never ex uh, had experienced had I not taken the risk. I hope that in anything that you're facing, if there are a lot of resounding voices shouting and there's a peaceful calling and aspiration, seek that path and walk on it with joy.